My name is Nishayu. I've been advocating transgender rights in Malaysia for the past eight years. The most frequent question being asked to me was always, Nisha, when did you become a transgender person? You know what? We don't become one. We are born as one, and that's the fact. This is me when I was just six years old. My mom used to tell me that whenever she brings me to the barber, I would cry out loud. I portray my femininity since I was like six years old. And at that time, my family thought it was just a phase for him. Eventually, I would become a boy, but they were wrong. I was bullied in school. I faced a lot of discrimination in school and everything. Even my family members tend to correct me in every way. They want me to walk like a boy. I mean, who walks like a boy, by the way? They want me to talk like a boy. But I was a rebellious kid. This was my first time when I did my transition. I was just 19 years old. I was so happy because even though I faced such discrimination from the society, from my family, from religion and everything, I was so determined to be myself. And when I was 20 years old, I did my first top surgery. I was like heaven. You know, having the feminine thing in your body. I thought that I was like, you know, in the right path. I had a normal job and I was taking care of my mom and everything. But eventually one day, I was arrested by the religious department. I was sentenced to prison, three months in prison. I was even put in the male's prison. They balled my hair. They asked me to strip naked in front of everyone. And they make fun of me because my body doesn't conform of what men and women are supposed to be. It was a horrible moment for me in prison. I was sexually abused, verbally abused. I was falsely asked to do sexual activities towards other men in there. I wanted to commit suicide. The only thing that didn't, then didn't make me commit suicide was my mom. She came and visited me every single week. And the only conversation we had was our tears. It was a blessing in a way, because at that moment, there was acceptance from my mom. And she realized that she don't have a son, but she has a daughter. I remember telling my mom, please, mom, can you please buy me a week whenever, when, I, when I come up from prison? And guess what she did? As soon as I came up from prison, I told myself, I need to do something about this. I do not want anything to happen to other trans people of what I've gone through. The laws in Malaysia, for instance, in Malacca, where I come from, we can be fined to up to 1,000 ringgit and sentenced to six months in prison. I was lucky that it was three months. But trust me, it felt like three years, yeah. In Perlis, we have female person posing as men and can be fined to 5,000 ringgit and five years in prison. Just recently, 17 transgender women was arrested. This was their first offense, but all of them were balled their hair and put in prison. Recently, we did a research. We found out that 37 out of 76 trans women interviewed has been arrested. And six out of 37 was sent to male prison. Our own government, our own country, creates a very unenabling environment for trans people. We are seen as deviants. It actually encourages people to react in a hatred situation towards trans people. Her name is Mona. She was slashed on the throat by a few bikers on the street that goes around and start to hit any transgender people that they see. And that person that had been arrested was basically just fined 400 ringgit, which is equivalent to its 100 US, I think. Now you'll be thinking, why is she all laughing at everything, right? Because for the past four years, we have been trying to challenge the law, the law that actually says that we cannot be who we are, to express ourselves. It took us four years. And guess what? Recently, we just won the case. It was a historical moment for all Malaysians. You know why? Because this was the first ever that a Sharia law has been challenged. And it's been challenged by transgender people. Come on. But uh, just recently, I got an email saying that, which we expected, the state government wants to challenge the judgment. We have victory, and then we have backlashes, and then we have a case again. But you know what? If we don't voice out our issues, 
and if we don't stand up together, we cannot face all these people out there. Whether you are Malaysian, whether you are an Australian, whatever, New Zealand or whatever, as long as you are an LGBT people or people who don't conform towards what people say as being normal, we should stick together. As for me, personally, this is what I feel. You can cut my hair, you can strip me naked, and you can take my dignity away from me. You can even kill me, but you cannot take away my identity as a transgender person. Because I will live and I will breathe and I will die as a transgender woman, no matter what. Thank you.